I'm so glad welcome to the remnant. You guys, we did it. Woo! <laughs> all right, so pretty much what the remnant's gonna be is a Christian. I mean, kind of obvious. We're here. We got the Bible. We got gospel music. Um, we got a, this thing, whatever this is. We're set. Like we we love Jesus. We're gonna have a Christian club. This gonna be awesome, guys. Um, whether you believe in Christ or not, whether you have friends that believe in Christ or not, it doesn't really matter. We just want an inclusive space to you know share what we gotta say, listen to what you guys gotta say, and have a good community. Um, this club is pretty much gonna be run by um, myself and. Right now we have my leaders, uh, Jaylene, over there. We have Jesse in the back of the cameras. We have Mr. Haith in that back row. We have Nancy as always. And of course, we have myself. Um, in the future, we are going to have more leaders come in. Like, I'm sure you'd be interested in something like that. Um, and if you're interested in, you're interested, like, we're going to have these things open up as uh, time goes on. For right now, we have what we need. So just, <laughs> you guys, God's blessed us greatly. Um, yeah, so we're going to go over a few things. We have the expectations, and we want, I'm going to do some icebreakers, and we're going to start. Um, so first of all, let's go over the expectations. Um, number one, I will say number one. Number one. Be respectful. All right, so pretty much we want to make sure that everyone here feels respected, feels included, and feels welcome. Of course, because they don't, this club will end. <laughs> um, <laughs> It, it was very uh, stressed out by the school board that they want this to be a very inclusive place, a very um, welcoming place for all people of all different types of uh, ethnicities, race, backgrounds, religions, beliefs, like whatever it is. We want to include them, we want them to be welcomed here. Whether that was uh, school board or not, everyone that comes in here, they're part of the family, immediately. Um, and then the second thing is be safe, all right? So that pretty much means like, don't do anything dangerous, all right, I will say number two. Number two, number two, be safe. Be safe. We don't want anyone to get hurt um, physically, emotionally, mentally. Um, so obviously no fighting. Um, we got the snacks over there. Please take one. And after everyone's had one, you guys can take two. We don't need this fighting over who gets the last bag. Rock, paper, scissors will do just fine. <laughs> um, yeah, and then also something included in being safe. Um, what happens in this room stays in this room. Of course, we want this to be a very open place. Um, there's going to be a lot of people's like personal information that's going to probably come out. Um, that's kind of just what happens when you're in an environment like this and the Holy Spirit gets moving. Uh, the Holy Spirit will reveal something to you that you have to change or talk about or open up about. Um, and then, of course, you need someone to talk to. That stays here. All of this stays here. Um, and, of course, I'm going to be opening up about myself. Uh, I would prefer if we keep, keep it here. But, of course, if you feel like you can use uh, anything I say, as an example, to help someone else, feel free. But as for other people, I can't talk for them. Just ask permission. Just be safe. Um, number three, everyone say number three. Number three. Number three is to have fun. The biggest thing, guys, we don't want you guys to come in here and be like, oh, this is lame, this is boring. Um, definitely come in here. We want to see good energy. We want to see hype energy. I love this man's energy. This man has all the energy. Can I get me? <laughs> um, I'm old school. <laughs> he's old school. I love that guy. Um, so yeah, just have fun. Um, don't feel like anything's um, per se off limits. If you have any questions about something like, hey, can I do this? Um, just ask. I will say try not to leave the room without permission from Mr. Hay. Um, but Mr. Hay is one of us. So <laughs> don't feel too pressured to not talk to him. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for the expectations. Next thing is the icebreaker. Um, so there's this thing that we do in my church, and we, we uh, put our fists in the air, and then we're going to count to three, and you're going to show me where you are. Thumbs up is you're having a good week, thumbs in the middle, uh, and then week, and then thumbs down, you're having a terrible week. It's awful. All right, so on the count of three, we're going to put our front, thumbs up. One, two, three. Hey, love to see it, love to see it. We have it generally up. I love to see it, guys. Um, <laughs> And just because this is going to be more of a personal environment, it's not like a mega church or anything, um, I do want to get to know you guys, so if you guys don't mind, uh, I'd love to just go around and just something, like say something about ourselves, uh, our name, great, and something about ourselves. So I'll start. I'm Jason. I am a junior, 11th grade, and I love Jesus. Woo! <laughs> I love that. We're going to clap after every single one, so get ready to clap. Okay, we'll start here, we'll do zigzags. So it's great to meet all of you guys. Um, I'm really looking forward, because you guys are the first people, you guys are the first faces I've seen uh, at this place, and 
I'm excited to just grow with you guys, you know? I, it's not just going to be you guys who are learning from me. I'm going to be learning a lot from you guys. Um, just being here, it's such an honor. Um, you know, we've been waiting for this for almost a year. I've been trying to get this going. Jay Lee knows. Um, and it's been a journey, guys, so I'm just so happy to be here to see you guys. And I'm excited to get things started with you all. Um, so I guess before I talk, I want to go a little bit into my background um, on how I got saved, just a little bit of my testimony. Um, back in 2017, I was first diagnosed with depression, and I was having recurring suicidal thoughts, and it was pretty bad. Um, my last, my most recent suicide attempt was July of 2020. Um, I was stuck in self-harm, sexual sin, and just such, like, you know, like, mental torment, pretty much, the best way I can put it. Um, and I know a lot of you guys can relate, and a lot of people in our school can relate to that, but... That, that's where I was at, and it was bad. Um, and then one day, I guess the Holy Spirit prompted me without me knowing to sign up for an event at our church called Fall Renewal um, that happened in uh, September of last year. We just finished it. This is this year's Fall Renewal church right here. Um, <laughs> so kind of, kind of a, just interesting story. Uh, I, I just felt so strongly moved by the Holy Spirit that day um, that right before worship broke out, I tore my shirt in half and started worshiping with all my life. That's a, please don't tear your shirt in worship in public, but, <laughs> but I, I, it was a radical change. And I tell you, I was crying, I couldn't stop crying, and I, I was on the, on the floor crying and, stop, and talking to God, like, God, why, why are you doing this to me? Like, what is wrong with my life? Like, I can't control my life. And it was there, uh, what was it, September 25th, um, 2020. I was on the floor, absolutely bawling, out of my mind, and I said, God, I can't control my life. Everything seems to go south whenever I want it to go north. So you know what? If you think you can use this broken body and this broken life, do whatever you want. And in that moment, I felt just anointing oil over my head. And I looked back like, yo, maybe one of the leaders knew it. There was no one there. And ever since, I've just been radically changed. From a kid who never smiled to a kid who could not stop smiling. To a kid who never used his voice. To a, king, a kid who could never stop singing. When I tell you one year ago, two years ago, I would never have been here, never imagined myself here. I tell you, I was so far away from God. And God uses the broken people. Am I right? Amen. So yeah, just, I just want to give you guys a little bit of background because I know, again, we're going to be getting personal a lot. Um, it's not just going to be me speaking. We're gonna, I'm going to try to include as many of you guys as possible. Um, and I want you guys to feel open, you know? I just shared a little bit about myself. Of course, if you guys are feeling um, like you want to, of course you guys can share something about yourself, too. Um, anyways, <laughs> let, let's move on. Now, uh, I'm going to get to my lesson. The name of the lesson is uh, it's called, Who Am I? Who am I? If you're taking notes, you can write that down. If you're not, it's all right. I got the notes already. I'm reading them. <laughs> Um, who am I? So, I guess it's kind of like, why are we here, you know? Like, what's the point? I, I live this life, I, I walk around, and I just, I just am, but why, why am I that I am? You know? Like, I live and I breathe, why do I do that? I, I, I have uncontrollable urges, why? Like, what, is my, what am I supposed to do on this earth? What is my purpose? And that's kind of what we're going to be going over. Does anyone have any uh, guesses as to what your purpose is here on earth? To preach and get as many souls saved. Try, I'm just a nobody trying to tell us about somebody, about somebody who can save anybody. Amen. That's my purpose. Anyone else? Any other guesses? So you're going to force yourself. Spread love, be love, be light. Be light? That's good, that's good, honestly. Does anyone else have any, anything you want to add? So, God created everything for a reason. I mean, stars are perfectly orbiting. Animals are all just, like, every animal has a purpose. The cow is meant to eat, the, the worms fertilize the ground. Um, fire, it provides heat, it cooks things, it, it brings light. Na all of nature obeys God. So, what's the meaning of my life? If the stars worship him, what, what do I do? And the answer is simply this, to glorify God. Uh, I'm not going to have you turn to this, but Isaiah 43, 6 through 7, it says, I will say to the north and to the south, bring my sons and daughters back to Israel from the distant corners of the earth. 
bring all who claim me as their God, for I have made them for my glory. It was I who created them. Right there we have our answer. We're created for the glory of God. We're meant to glorify him with our bodies, glorify him with our lives, glorify him with our words, glorify him with our actions, and every step, glorify God. And what a great calling, how undeserving we are, and yet the God of the universe calls us to glorify him. So, here's a question. How do we glorify God? By spreading his light. Spreading his light. Living a holy and separated life in this present world. Living holy and separated. <laughs> How do we glorify God? Um, by giving him everything. Giving him everything. Well, all of you guys are right. Literally 100% of you guys are right. Um, <laughs> don't be afraid to be wrong. Um, it's true. It's going to affect everything. When God calls you, it's going to affect every single part of your life. This is what I want you guys to turn to. Is, uh, Romans 12. Romans 12. Because. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah, when Romans pops out, you know things about to pop off. <laughs> Romans 12. Uh, I'll let him finish flipping. It's crazy, guys. You guys ready to get into this? <laughs> Beloved friends, what should be our proper response to God's marvelous mercies? To surrender yourself to God, to be his sacred living sacrifices and live in holiness, experiencing all that delights his heart. For this becomes your genuine expression of worship. Stop imitating the opinions of the culture around you, but be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. This will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful, satisfying, and pleasing, perfect life. In his eyes. <laughs> that's a turnover. <laughs> I can literally live right there. That, that's, that, that's pretty much everything you need to cover. Do you want to live a glory life? Do you want to have a purposeful life? That's it, bye. <laughs> All right, so let, let's start about that. What did, what, did you, what did you guys see in there? That's why I wanted you guys to pull it out so you can refer back. What do you see in there? Just give me something that you saw in there that you do to glorify God. Just live over you what he's saying. And holy, live by, the word. live by the word. I mean, these are great things, guys. I mean, these are these are things that if you apply, God promises. This is a God promise by the King of the Universe. Keep in mind, not just some random Joe Schmo. Yeah, I'll give you twenty bucks. This is God saying, if you live a a purposeful, satisfying, and beautiful life, you well, you can have all that that a beautiful, pleasing, and perfect life if you would just do these things. And we're going to go over it. Number one. Worship. If you go back, you can see what is worship. Well, what do you guys think worship is? <laughs> um, in worship, it's a movement experience. It's an experience that can be unexplainable. When it's just you and God. Yeah. It doesn't matter who's around you. It doesn't matter where you are. Worship is when it's just you and God. That's how it's done. <laughs> yep. Anyone else want to go for it? Take a shot at what worship is? And just be giving thanks. A lot of times it's singing or dancing, but just being really, really thankful. Like, really and knowing that it's not you, it's, it's somewhere else. That's Absolutely. it. Anyone else have any ideas? Oh. We read it in the previous verse. <laughs> well, let's, let's reread it real quick. Just, just that beginning part. To surrender yourselves to God. To be sacred and living sacrifices. To live in holiness and experience all that delights his heart. That is your genuine expression of worship. And well, yeah, like singing and praising, singing and worshiping, that's definitely a form of worship because you're giving it back to God. But what he asks is your complete and total surrender. Number two, going. This is, a, this is in a different verse. Um, this is the Great Commission, guys. You're called for this. In Matthew 28, 19, uh, <laughs> Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's it. Being obedient to God. 
And that's one of the biggest things, is if you want to live in surrender, you can't live in surrender and then be like, like, ah, oh, God, you got everything! And then like, he's like, okay, go talk to that person. Nope. <laughs> if God calls you to talk to someone, you got to go. You know, and God is calling you. Like, whether you hear his voice audibly or not, whether you hear the Holy Spirit, the whispers, you are called to go and to commission, as we've just seen, as we've just read. The Bible says, go and preach the good news. So, you want to live a, a, a purposeful life? Go. Preach the good news. That's it. Honestly, obedience. That, I, sh I should have renamed that one to obedience. Being obedient to all that God says. And one of the things he says just happens to be the commission. Uh, number three, sanctification. Does anyone have any clue what sanctification means? Let's go deeper. What does that mean? What does that entail? That entails not doing everything that the world does, not always following the culture tags, not following what you see on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, the things that we see day to day. Sanctification is the process and really the lifestyle of a holy life, like the scripture says in the book of Romans, living a separated life in the presence of God in order to worship Him. Because the Bible also says, they that worship the Lord must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Mm -hmm. So if, if you are going to worship the Lord, you've got to be true. Like, you've got to be true. That's true, that's right, that's right. That, that's really good. Yo, honestly, why don't you just not here? you want to preach your day. <laughs> Any other ideas? What does sanctification mean? Any ideas? No wrong answers. Yeah. Yeah. Like, still keep going. Like, you can always go deeper. Like, how about this? How would that apply to you? Changing the behaviors. Yeah. Changing the behaviors. The old school way of fasting. <laughs> right. Any other ideas? How how does sanctification apply to you? I mean, if you, if you read back in the Romans 12, which is why I kind of wanted you guys to keep going so long, but it's all right. It says, um, stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you. You know, we, we notice that sometimes culture is wrong. It, it, culture is always changing, but sometimes it's wrong. For example, I mean, if we go back, this is just something I, I, I remember hearing back way back when. Majority of people were pro-slavery way back when, you know, early United States. And that's not right. I mean, obviously, it doesn't, it doesn't take much of a genius to know that's not right, obviously. That's forcing someone to do something that they don't want to do. And it's okay to be against culture. And the reason why I say that is because a lot of us are hearing some, some of the things that the world is saying. You have to be this way, you have to be, you have to look like this, you have to be this tall, you have to, to, to agree with us, you have to accept how, how we are. You have to listen to what we say. And oftentimes, it's just not right. And, I mean, that's okay. The Bible says that this is going to happen, but in order for you to live a holy and sanctified life, and to feel purpose, and to feel joy in every step, in order to get the promises that the Lord has promised you, you have to obey the Lord by being sanctified. And that's a big thing, because a lot of us, we want the promises, but we don't want the sanctification. We want the pure gold, but we refuse to go and refine. So this is why it's so important, because in, in Leviticus 28, this is really short, you don't have to flip, he loves to flip. <laughs> it says, keep all of my decrees by putting them into practice, for I am the Lord who makes you holy. So simply, how do we be holy? We listen to the decrees of the Lord. That's it. And by obeying God, by being obedient to the Lord, you're already made holy. I mean, honestly, you're already made holy by Jesus in this new covenant. Like, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. We're already holy. That's the thing, too. If something changed when Jesus died. This is Leviticus. This is the Old Testament. When Jesus came, as soon as you accept Jesus, you're, you're holy. And you're righteous. And you're redeemed. But if you want to pursue holiness, like, like the Bible tells you to, if you want to pursue the sanctification, if you want to truly be refined and truly accept these promises that God has for you, a big thing is by listening to what the Lord has decreed. So, what's stopping us? I mean, 
hey, we just learned our, our purpose in life, right? Like, we could, like, I can literally, right now, you guys know exactly what to do for the rest of your lives. If you listen to what I said, you're living a holy life. Like, you're, you're set. You're on a straight path, a straight and narrow path, and you just listen to what I said. But what's stopping us? What's one of those things that is just in our way from living in complete holiness? The world. The world. Fear. Fear. Sometimes we can keep every family. Family. I like it. <laughs> what else is stopping us? Judgment. Judgment. According to the Siri Dictionary, <laughs> Sin is an immoral act, considered to be a transgression, transgression against the divine law. Now, I feel like most of you guys, I don't have to convince you that you're sinners. Like you already know, nobody is perfect. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. I mean, have you guys ever lied before? <laughs> you ever think someone's cute? Like, look at someone and be like, dang really love to be with that person. I mean, you ever cheat on a test? Like, come on, somebody. I've cheated on a test before. I mean, come on, don't lie to me. We've all cheated before. Nah, that lie. God bless your heart. Come on. It's so hard to not cheat. When in that Spanish class, we don't remember anything. Maybe that's just me, but... But what does that make you? That makes you a lying, cheating, adulterer. We have all falling short of the glory of God. And by no means am I pointing fingers at you, because honestly, he's right here, man. I am a sinner, and it's, it's impossible to deny. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. And the Bible says, in Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal through Christ Jesus our Lord. So, although you might be impacted by sin, whether that's what you're doing right now is just wrong and you know it, whether you have that one addiction that you know you've been holding on to, that one bad habit that you don't want to let go of, maybe it's that one person in your life that you just keep running back to. And you think that person's going to bring you that joy and that, that satisfaction that you need. Maybe it's your time priorities. Maybe you're spending too much time on looking at your cell phone or doing things you enjoy. Maybe you just are in the kitchen too much. I mean, honestly, I can relate to that. The point is, we all have something that we're doing that is holding us back. And if we continue to go down that road that we've been going down, if we continue to think these thoughts that we've been allowing ourselves to think, and we keep following these habits that we think are going to help us, what's going to happen? Bible says death. And usually when we talk about this death, we talk about spiritual death. I mean, you're just not going to ever find that relationship, that true purpose that God has for you. You're never going to fully experience that love that God wants to give to you. So the promises of a long and fruitful life. I mean, you guys are, are our generation is always looking for the one. If we ever look towards the one. I mean, I know it's a little cringy, I'm a, but y'all know I'm a little cringy. We all are looking for the one. Have you ever looked, thought about looking for the one? If you really want pure, pure, wholesome, unexplainable, never-ending joy and love and satisfaction in your life, stop looking at things that are going to end one day. Stop looking at things in this world that are just going to leave you in the end empty and alone. Look towards the one who will be with you at all times. The one who will stand by you and hold your hand when things are hard. Who will fill your ears with promises when the enemy is speaking death. When everything seems to be going straight to hell in a handbasket, God is going to be with you if you just follow his commandments. In Romans 22, 6.22, says, this is the verse right before that. You see that? The verse right before the verse I read. Because before you were a sinner, before you were even created, God, Jesus, already died for you. Already paid the price for you. 
It says, but you are now free from the power of sin and have become slaves to God. Now you do these things that lead to holiness and result in eternal life. You see, it doesn't take uh, a prophet to explain this to you guys. It doesn't have to take, take any major event. I'm telling you right now, through someone who, who's experienced it, life is freaking hard. And honestly, these temptations in this world, I mean, honestly, dude, sexual sin is so hard to deal with. Speaking from someone who's dealt with it. Depression is so hard to get out of. And not that that's a sin, but it's so hard to get out of. And I, why do we keep looking towards things on this world? We keep thinking maybe a girlfriend, a friend can hold these things, but don't you realize that Jesus Christ, the God of the universe, died specifically so you can live a holy and pleasing life. Specifically so you can be filled with his promises, filled with his peace, filled with his anointing over your life. Jesus died specifically for you. He saw you and he said, you are worth it. You are absolutely everything that I want you to be. And even though you're not there yet, even though I understand, maybe you're, you're like 10 steps back, but I just need you to take the first step and I'll take the rest of the nine. That's what Jesus did when he died. If he wants to reach out to you guys throughout all your day, not just today, not just tomorrow, every single day, God wants to reach out to you and talk to you and have that relationship and that bonding experience with you. All you need to do is accept it. And listen to him, be obedient, and turn from sin. Repent, and live holy, like he's holy. Any questions? I mean, they, that's it, that's it. Um, that's all I got for you today. Um, if you feel convicted or like you need to talk about anything, again, you can talk to any one of my leaders. Um, we're more than happy to talk to you, pray for you, um, you know, have that relationship with you, be the person standing in the gap for you. Um, and if you need and if you need anything, of course, like just talk to me. Um, honestly, it's been a pleasure getting to speak with you guys. I know this is our first meeting, um, and things are a little bit wonky, but um, I'm happy to see you guys here. <laughs> so um, that's all I have for today. Uh, so a couple more, a uh, couple last announcements I want to make before I dismiss uh, officially is um. We're hanging out here. Pretty much, we're going to be here till four. Um, just hanging out, playing games, having fun. Uh, we have a whole snack thing over there. If you guys want something, go take it. Um, and next week, we are going to be doing a Bible study. So it won't be me here standing and talking to you guys. We'll all be um, sitting around probably one of those tables and uh, reading scripture. Um, and I'm looking forward to it. That's going to be pretty much hosted by Jay Lee. <laughs> Um, and last but not least, I do want to give a huge shout out to Mr. Hayes for just being a sponsoring us, allowing us to be in the room. Honestly, when I first, uh, when I was first getting this club together, I, I felt like the Holy Spirit was like, the teacher about to talk to him is the one who's going to, he, he's it. And literally ever since I first emailed him, it's just like perfect response after perfect response. Like, you know, when you got that true servant, like you're talking to someone who you know is a servant, who knows like how to live holy and righteous. They just everything they say seems to be just so perfect to what you need. Maybe not. <laughs> and that's what it, that's what it's been. And it's been a pleasure working with Mr. Hayes and getting this all set up for you guys. Um, so yeah, next week we'll be in here, uh, same time Friday. Uh, you guys are welcome to come in, bring games, bring friends. We really want to see a lot of people in these. We want to see these seats absolutely crowded out, and then we have those seats over there when you're all done. Um, yeah, that's it. Hallelujah. All right, that's pretty much it. You guys are dismissed. You guys can do whatever you want. Uh, wait, wait. Even though I'm not really there, I feel I should be there. Okay. The church that I grew up in, we don't close out the sermon without an altar call. We don't, we don't do that. So let's everybody stand. I feel like we should be there. Everybody stand. And if the recording is still going on, everybody come. Let's come. Even though we still worry about this stuff, <laughs> let God protect us. Let, let us go forth to the Father in prayer. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this hour. We thank you from the word of God. We have received knowledge and wisdom right now in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for the lives of these people that have come as servants and vessels for you right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we thank you now. God, I'm asking right now in this moment that even in these empty seats, let the souls 
that be convicted by your power and that know you let them be convicted to come. Oh God, let them be able to come in this, what I call a church, what I call a place of worship. Let them come here. Oh God, in fellowship with you. God, I thank you for the word. I thank you for the word on today. I thank you for the man of God that has been delivering a powerful word to these your people. And God, as we get ready to go forth into the rest of our day, as we get ready to go forth in the final quarter of our day, God, I ask that you just let your spirit and your anointing be with us right now. Oh God, let us walk in your spirit from this place. Let us walk with the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Let us walk forth in power. In the name of Jesus, God, give us the anointing that we need in order to live and worship you in holiness. As the man of God said, we need to worship you in holiness. But God, we need your spirit. So God, endow us right now. Endow us with power from on high. Oh God, give us the power. Give us the knowledge. Give us the anointing of the Holy Ghost right now. In the name of Jesus, be with us now. Guide us and keep us. And God, we just thank you now. And we bless you now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Everybody clap your hands and say amen. amen. <laughs> so yeah, that's it, guys. Um, you guys are welcome to stay as long as you'd like. Except yeah. fast forward, don't do that. <laughs> we want to go home too. Um, yeah, that's it. Being